hello guys now since we have already done our heavy lifting in our entry point of the application now it's time to go and get started with our models because models are something like which we always require in order to validate our objects or even the uh, the functional objects of our application so in the sense we are creating our authentication application so we need to deal with something called user so for that in my models directory I'm gonna create a new file called user.js and I'm also gonna create a new file index.js so in our users directory I'm gonna bring in something from mongoose package that is schema and we need to bring in model then const user schema equal to new schema and in this I'm gonna pass a couple of arguments so first argument second argument which I'm gonna pass in timestamp to true and this will basically give you created at and updated at fields and then for the user we need name and which will be of type string require set it to true username type string equal to true required set it to true then we need something called email and for that email again we need all that stuff so I'm gonna quickly copy and paste it over here then we need something called password so I'm again gonna copy and paste and this is our user schema so I'm gonna export I'm gonna create a new constant user equal to mm, model users user schema so this will be our connection for our collection uh, collection basically for our user state users collection and this will be a plural one export default and this will be a user so we are exporting default by default user our user from our this file and then I'm gonna bring in that from export default user from our user export default as user from user so this will be which will be we which will be exporting from here and so for now you can also create another any type of other schema you can directly import it here and export from there so you don't have to remember from where you are bringing you just have to register in our index.js in the models and then you can do a lot of stuff with that so once that part is done now we have successfully created our user schema so instead of this auth i feel like to remove this folder and i want to create a new folder called functions and in this i'm going to create a new file called auth.js so basically this will be our file which will be dealing which we will be dealing for our authentication functions now we are going to our graphql and in our type definition we are going to start with our resolver functions so first of all i'm going to create a new file in that called root.js the second one which one i'm going to create is user user.js so basically what is happening all the static typing for our user functions will be in this and this will be our root and then we'll import everything from these two files and then export it by default from here so the way we are going to do this is is this will be simply firstly we'll need to bring in gql from apollo server express and then we are going to export default in our index.js file i'm sorry not in index.js in our root.js export default gql and we are gonna pass in a couple of strings over here and now here we are gonna define our root of our query so first of all type query and this will be string and you don't have to worry about that and then in the same way mutation and that's for now from here that's that we are exporting from here so this is our root 
and in the same way we are gonna import root from root and we are gonna export an array so export default root so this will be our root and in the same way we are gonna define since how we have defined this our root in the same way we are going to define our user queries so the way we are going to start working with our user queries will be simply not too much and i'll explain these stuff one by one so firstly extend it need it has some kind of queries inside that so first of all we, the, whatever the function which we are going to pass in will be here and it will be also having some kind of some kind of mutations so that's the way how we are going to create that export that mutations and then we can also define our custom types so the custom types i'm going to say simply type auth or let's say we define our user and user need an id so for in a graph you will be already have an id field and we don't need to give commas and anything and it has name which will be again a string and which will be not null sorry forgotten not none then it has some username string will be not null and in the same way email so these are the three fields which we are gonna pass which we need to which we will expect expect in our user so the id part is fine and one more thing created at string for now and in the same way we have updated at okay then we have one more type which we're gonna pass as auth type so in that we are gonna pass user which will be of type user and our token which will be our string refresh token string so these tokens are nothing but the strings so i'm gonna use that string over here and now here we are gonna define our queries and here we are gonna define our mutations so mutations now coming to the mutation and what are the queries so queries are basically something which we want to query and get some data back but we are not committing any kind of change to the database or giving any kind like creating updating or deleting anything from the database so that will be a query but the mutation will be something like we are if we are gonna mutate something in our database or even you are gonna store something that will be a mutation so first of all let's say for a user we have a profile query and this will return a user right and that shouldn't be a null then we have a list of user and that will be our user array and then again that user won't be an empty thing and then we have something called refresh token and again it will return something with auth the type which we have defined over here and then we have a login query because login since a login is a query because it doesn't it just reads the database but it doesn't perform any kind of mutation so we are considering login as a query then we have a password because in a login we need something called username and a password and the way the return type of this will be auth so these are the four functions which will be creating our application in our resolvers in order to do our stuff then we have a register user so registration is also registration is a kind of mutation since we are gonna you we are going to add some data to the backend so it will require a name and that will be a string then email again that will be a kind of a string and username that will be again a string and then a password field and forgot string so this is something which we are going to pass in here and the written type and pardon my about this one this will be a query uh this will be and written type will be an authentication since we are gonna authenticate the user 
in the same registration flow only and let me spread these things also and that's fine no worries that's fine so these are like five functions which we are going to deal with this and for now with that all set we are good to go with our root resolvers uh, type definitions and we need to one last thing we need to import that user from our user in the same directory and we just need to pass that in our array so this is how we are gonna do that so once we are done with this type definition now it's time to work with our resolvers so the way we are gonna work with this is simply by creating first file that's called user.js and it is again gonna export default an array which will be our user array for now and here we are gonna import that user from the same directory and make sure this is a resolver not the type definition whatever we need to do we needed to do in our type definition we have already done so don't worry about that so now what's gonna happen is simply uh, we didn't have we haven't started yet anything in our users function so now we need to simply start creating our resolvers in our users function and that will be very simple to use create those functions we need to export an object from here so we can simply say export default and this will export query and in the same way it will export mutation so first function which we have and make sure whatever you have defined in here this part same way you are going to define everything in the same so for example we have this profile user function refresh token and login mechanism in queries we need to add that here first of all we are going to say profile and this will be a function And in the same way, we are going to say users. So this will give the active user counts. Then we have a refresh token. And then we have a login. And I'll tell you later how it's working. And then we have a registration register so these are the basic mutations which we are going to export from here and these are the basic functions so let's start working how it is gonna work so for now it's simple simply I'm gonna import our first of all our database import user from our models and since we are already using that uh, index.js file here so it will automatically pull that user from here and import it over here so you don't have to worry about that so once we are done with that now we need to simply start working on arguments oh sorry we need to start with registration and for now args and we also need something called root so in this way we can access other mutations also and this is ARGS then we have a request and we have something called info so this way we are going to create our user and this will be a simply firstly we need to validate the user data and the validation part will come here which we'll do in just a second so let's let's go ahead and see how it runs in our application so i'm simply gonna start saying npm run dev and let's hope runs everything just works fine and i think there's some issue it says invalid or unexpected token on config.js config index.js i think that's configuration export const oh sorry process.env because we are pulling that everything from 
process environment. Let me quickly reset the server because the main configuration file have been displaced. So it's, it wasn't able to pull in the configuration. And query users define and resolvers but not in schema. So you can see the, we, the, how we started getting our type checks. So this was the function which was making kind of validating. So this was the users um, which wasn't defined in our type definition that why it showed the error. And now you can see our application is running completely fine. So now if I go ahead and open new window and we can navigate to localhost port 4000, we can't see anything, right? Cannot get that. But if we go to GraphQL, you can see GraphQL Playground is not started. And that's why it is happening. Sorry about that, guys. Actually, I forgot to apply this middleware, which has to pass in our app. So you can, before just start listening to that application, you need to apply this middleware. So app and course equal to false. So once we are done and we are ready to go with our application, Hooray! So let's get started and get started with our playground. Sorry about that. So now I told you remember in our main entry point, I wanted to create one more, I wanted to add one middleware, uh, remove one middleware. So if I go ahead and if I show you something in inspector, if you go ahead and see all the requests made in the network tab, run and then see. So type definition, let's show you how it works. Return ARGS dot user or is it so? Yeah. So just let re return whatever we are getting from there. And we can see our servers are running fine. It is taking to restart. And let me show you how it works. I'm gonna create a mutation register user. And in this, I show you what is happening, why I was trying to say there was a header and that which I wanted to remove from that. So the way we are going to say is register and you can see it is all automatically picking up the things from there. Nandy Mandy, that's my name. Good going. Let me quickly increase that email. password my super secret password something and let me for you guys I'm gonna put it into the next line so that you guys can see properly everything visualize that and then we have a username Um, let's see all right okay and the what what are the things which we want to get back user and that's all for what we want to get back and in that user I want the name I want email and the password so you can see how easy is that not the password since we haven't used that you added that password so you can see in our type definition, it is not returning the password at all. So that's how that, that the password field has been not exposed. So if I run that, you can say register user is equal to null. I didn't wanted to show you this. I wanted to show you this part. So if you go ahead and expand this part, you can see there's a header. Mm, let me quickly clear and rerun that query. We are getting nothing back, I know. But if you can see, there's an X powered by Express. So this is a header which, which we don't want to expose. And for that, I want to remove that header. So the way we want to do that is simply by writing, uh, by adding our remove script. Uh, by writing this in our main in index.js. So setting up the middleware and this X powered by header I wanted to remove. So now if I save and go ahead and quickly clear that terminal and now you can see this is again restarting. 
the app is restarting and the app has been restarted and now if I send you can see that header has gone there is no header that for that now you can see that so this was the header which we wanted to remove this is how it is working and if I console log in our users function which we have just created uh, if I go to resolvers I want to console log ARGS and it's again restarting so you can see what if whatever we had in our arguments we are having here and it is returning empty just because we haven't defined user ARGS now if I run that thing this might take a moment so it cannot be reached because it is restarting again now server is restarted now if I see you can see a lot of fields are not there and that's just because we haven't passed that thing enough but if you can go here you can see our whole thing has been console log and see we have a lot of errors so that means our everything is working fine for now now we need to create our application with a signing mechanism so the things which we are going to do is now here so first of all i'm going to start creating our validators a new file in that user.js and i'm going to import joy from happy for the validation Mm, let me quickly see if that we, if we have installed that package no so for that I need to go to the new terminal and install that package npm happy package added it happy joy so I'm going to install that package npm i added it happy joy this might take a moment to install this package and now we are going to use that package in our validator so that we can create our validations happy slash joy so we'll bring in that and now we'll set some rules over here in order to validate our data so first first validation which we're going to create is for our name so for our name field we can simply say const name equal to joy dot string it should be a string first of all maximum will be 255 and this is a very and which is required then we have a label so this will throw the name uh, error in the same way in the same way we are going to use const email should be string and instead of max should be an email so this will validate our email for that and the label which we're going to use is email okay so in that same way we are going to use username and this should be a string max 255 dot min we are chaining everything together and minimum let's say we have a six characters and we have a username in here so these are the validation rules for our application const password equal to joy dot uh, let's copy maximum minimum eight maximum anything and that field is required minimum eight maximum thirty we are not giving anything else label password and since we are having a lot of other stuff also so we can use our reg regex also regex validation so i can simply say add here dot regex and in this regex regular expression i can use my field i can use my regular expression to match that thing so I will simply write 
here. Uh, let me quickly refer that equal to slash s. I know this is kind of pain, guys, but trust me, once you are good with this thing, you can write any kind of regex query equal to slash s and we need something called a to z asterisk i forgot that asterisk and we need something from a special character so we can simply say slash s asterisk slash d dot dollar and i think that's it for now so let me quickly test this again this is for the small characters this is for the bigger characters this was a special character a digit then for the special character yeah i want asterisk was missing so this is the regular expression to which our test case will be set test case will be passed and then we have something our language So for that language, we need to say a couple of custom custom messages for even for the regular expression. So for that, I think not language, options, yeah, language, and in that language, we want a string, and in that string, we are going to check for regex. If we have regex error, we will send that base must have at least one lower case letter one upper case letter and one digit i think that's a message for this one let me quickly shrink that so that you can see properly so these are the rules for the for our thing but now we are going to export something from here export const login validate because for the login joy.object and more about that you can learn from our this page and we just need username we just need username and password text and in the same way we want our register validate and in that we need something name also and an email also so we are passing this one is for the registration validation rules and this one is for the login validation rules so once we are done with that now we need to export export all from users so we are exporting everything from the validations so these are the validation and now we need to validate our data so remember if we console logged we were getting our whole user object thrown here and now we can mask that user object using this register uh, this regular expression whatever we have we can test that thing so the way we're gonna do that is simply say await and we need to bring in joy over here import joy from adderate happy joy and i know after this registration we are gonna switch to the next video i know this video is kind of long and it's really hot here so just bear with me and we need to test that now here so validate the user data since whatever we were passing we are getting in our arguments so we can simply say joy dot validate and the way we are going to validate by passing arcs and now this since it is a registration validate so we can simply bring in from our validators we are bringing register validate register validate this will be our cases and there is one more argument about early 
so i'll explain what it is doing uh, firstly we are setting that false so what is happening here by passing this argument is simply if we have failed we have like everything in serial order over here you can see and one more error which we are getting is just because since it is an asynchronous function pardon my english yeah so we were using await and this was the error just so this award early is simply doing what if we have passed this thing if we, it fails at the name field only then it won't validate the other fields it will automatically break out from that and i want to wrap everything in try catch block or instead of putting everything in a try cache block we can simply use that part no worries it will automatically throw that error out and our console will feel 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 that now check if the user is already in the database with the same username so the way we are going to do that we can simply say let user equal to await user dot find one and we'll pass that query username args dot username okay but this will be a lot of work so I'm gonna simply say oh that's fine for now if user then throw new error user name is already taken But if not, we are going to simply check by email, email and if that email is already there, we are again going to throw that email is already registered. Okay. So in this way, we are going to pass that thing and we are going to check that thing. If both the cases are false like we don't have anything in there that means our user registration is valid so now we can simply check our user uh, we can create our user so we can simply say let new user is equal to await user dot create and we are going to pass that args in that but before that we need to hash the password so for that we have already installed a package called bcrypt js so we'll bring in that package and now we are going to use that Args dot password equal to await bcrypt dot hash and Args dot password and we'll pass 10 rounds of salt and then again once that part is done this will create that new user and that new user will be thrown back but since we are also sending the token back from the user if you go to our index uh, in our user.js schema it will return the authentication type and that contains a token so now here we are going to create that token functions so for that i will simply close that stuff and go to our functions and since we have created that file over here i'm going to create a couple of functions so once that user has been created now we need to issue the token and refresh token
okay and the way we are going to do that by simply going here we are going to create export const function issue token and that will take user or instead of that we can simply say username email and name in fact the id also of the user asynchronous function okay import uh, jwt from json the token and we have already installed that package so don't worry about that let token equal to jwt dot sign and we need to bring in our constants from our configurations okay configuration and we will bring those configuration apps refresh secret app secret and now we're gonna use that secret so first thing it takes like a payload then the secret and then expires in so here we can simply say app secret expires in two days and here we can pass our username email and name okay so this is our token then refreshed token and for this thing i'll simply say not like for now because since we, it is a refresh token uh, it is a normal token we can have it for the 60 seconds also like 120 minutes or 120 seconds also but refresh token is something which works for long so we can again pass that payload over here app secret app refresh secret and then expires in and we'll pass something for like one day or two day once we are done with us issuing the tokens and since it might take a moment for the algorithm hash and we'll return token and refresh token so that was the thing for the refresh token and now we can import that function in our user.js so import functions auth issue tokens let tokens equal to await issue token and we'll pass our user over here a new user over here and once we are once we are done with getting tokens we can simply spread that in here and that's how it will work so this language is not allowed let me quickly check what's going wrong and our validations language option language okay label password option language okay let me quickly see i think there's some documentation change i guess so okay guys actually i found the issue the issue was this this was a previous version which i was using and instead of that we can simply we have to simply write messages so in that messages we are going to pass an object and this is a very nice article which we found over here uh, and this uh, we can we have to simply pass that object in terms of messages and then we have to specify what messages we want so for a string dot rejects we have to specify that message over here 
So this was the previous version and it just got changed. So I was also pretty much confused why it wasn't working. Now it's, it should work just fine. So I'll mention that link in the description of the video and you can go through that and now you can see there's no issue with our GraphQL Apollo server. So let's go ahead and test our application if that works fine or not. Refresh token and let's see if it creates any user in the backend. So currently if I create that we are getting show it out validate is not a function and let me quickly check why it's not working so there's a lot of changes and this is not a quickie uh, this is not a very quickie cutter video so you can simply do all that stuff on your own also so let me quickly check and this joey has a lot of changed things in it so that's why i'm also pretty much confused why it's not working joey string username uh, okay guys actually what was happening in the previous documentation it was it was supposed to be done in this way but the thing is now it has been quite changed so whatever the schema which we have created the validation which we have created over here so instead of this object object dot key it was something written like that so instead of this we have to go this way so we have to export this object in this way and then this will be a validation schema and in that way we have to simply validate our stuff over here so there was a quick documentation which i got from the joey package and which is over here so validate async means like a, i'm simply checking for like there was something for so this way it's gotta work and in, in case of the award early, we have to pass it like this. So whatever the schema which we have created here, now we are exporting in terms of that with all the set of rules. And now we are passing our arguments in that. And in that way, we're gonna check. So I'm gonna quickly remove that part, but if you are using redundant version, so you can simply do that. So now if you can see, I have removed my email L and password D from the password. So you can see the we should get some that error and in, instead if i remove that abort early true so we'll get only two uh, only single error instead of that so you can see server cannot be reached in just a second it will start spin up the server and if i run you can see that we are getting all covered of error from there so now it's time for now us to create our user and issue a new token for that so if i run that now you can see email uh, what's going wrong i don't know unknown arguments so i think what's going wrong here is type email string label mm -hmm but if we console log that part over here console.log args this is reloading that server and if i refresh unknown argument email on the field of register i think that's yeah so in the type definition i might have made some mistake and yes it is there so it is reloading and thank you guys in this video i was like with the happy js a lot of things has been changed and now you can see we have the token over here as well as we have the refresh tokens so if you want to check the validity of this token you can go and copy this token and go to jwt dot io and paste that token and get the details whatever the details you wanted from that so this is i don't know why my internet is quite slow and i'm gonna paste my token and you can see all the fields whatever we have exposed is there and in the same way we have our refresh token 
so if I copy that refresh and remember this if issue at is just valid for a minute 120 seconds that currently it's 4 2 um, by by 4 3 it is gonna expire that token so you can see that now if I paste the other token you can see it is valid till 28th of May since, since today is 26th of May so in this way we can create that refresh token and all that stuff and if you want to check that if the data has been inserted to our DB or not you can simply go to compass and check that but currently what I'm gonna do is and one more thing I want to get rid of this console log okay and now if I retry uh, creating that since the, my database is starting up so now if I retry you can see fail to fetch check your connection let me quickly yeah if I retry you can see username is already taken so that means our validations are also working fine so in this way we can do that and let me quickly change my username now you can see our email is already taken so we cannot uh, do all that stuff so in the next video we will start creating our protector routes I can simply go to this part and I can simply say docker exec it mongo mongo is that so yeah so shell is running and if I show dbs you can see my graphql gql app I think gql app was the name of the environment yes gql app database is there so use gql app show collections okay db.users dot find dot pray and you can see that user is already registered so that's basically it about this video in the next video we are going to start working on our protected resources so and we will also use those headers and those tokens how we can use that we will work uh, we'll see in the next video and before going to before signing off to, to this video i just want to check with the postman also how you can run these queries in postman so i'm going to copy this part and instead of that i'm going to create a new user so this is taking a minute it, in a moment it will start yeah a lot of tabs are already open so we'll make that request local host 4000 instead of gq graphql and the body graphql option we'll pass that query in here and send that query I will get that response from there oh my god what's wrong yeah so you can see all kind of JSON response from there uh, so we'll try creating another user with the username Andy Mandy 2 uh, email this and if I send this request and you can see I have the token refresh token and all sort of data whatever we wanted so uh, one more thing I wanted to add I will hopefully I will add a basic introduction video to the GraphQL in the beginning of the series currently I haven't recorded but later I'm gonna put that GraphQL the way work the way it works is it has a single supercharged endpoint and it always resolves all those things so you can use that okay so for now sign signing off